One of the things that I worry about way more than things like my FTP or my VO2 max is my hormones and my sense of well-being. That being said, I've got my buddy Dave who knows way more than I do when it comes to hormones and hormone balances and just the way that training can affect us as humans. So I'm gonna ask him a few questions, predominantly about things like testosterone. So this is gonna be a little bit of a review and a chat about just how testosterone affects us when we train, the consequences of training on our testosterones and just everything that surrounds the world of cycling, fitness and hormones. David. <laughs> Thanks very much for having me on and talking through this stuff. It's going to be a good topic to get stuck into. First and foremost, two seconds. You, you, you've been, you know, I've known you since we were 18. Yeah. Cycling's a huge part of your life. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a part of my life since I was about, I think, 11 or 12 years old when I started um, cycling and then I started racing, raced at a national level as a junior, um, competed against all the top riders of our day. Yeah, you I, saw, know, I saw a photo about you as a kid and racing uh, Geraint Thomas and <laughs> Daniel Martin and all these guys, Alex Daus, you know, these, you know, the, these Olympians and Tour de France winners and Giro winners and everything are, are, are guys I used to um, race against every week as, cool. as a kid. That's cool because it basically it's nice that having a conversation with someone that has so much knowledge but then can also tie it back to the world of you know, cycling yeah. and well-being. So my first question I guess is like, what effect does testosterone or the need for testosterone mm -hmm. have on just, just humans? And is it slightly different with men and women? Yeah, it is. It's slightly different uh, for, men, for men and women. Um, I think, you know, when it comes to testosterone, obviously the main conversation is around, is around men because it is such an important hormone for men. Um, things like energy, motivation, uh, you know, sexual health, sexual performance, recovery, muscle growth, strength, um, you know, focus, all of these things, um, and, and mood, you know, mood outlook, all of these things are hugely impacted by our testosterone levels and our free testosterone levels. Um, and, you know, so it's something that we really have to stay on top of if we want to be, you know, for, for full kind of mental and physical well-being. So from a very simple perspective, if we don't look after our testosterone level, mm -hmm. will that impact us on a performance level slash recovery level? Yeah, it will do, yeah, it will. Um, not as much in purely endurance sports, but it will still impact recovery and you know, energy um, you know, dur you know, during activity and after activity especially, but recovery will be impacted if our testosterone levels do drop too low, yeah. Okay, so this is the, I'm gonna ask the questions that perhaps some other people might not ask or some Perfect. other people might yeah, not talk it. about. <laughs> um, and that is quite simply, I find I'm 41 years old, I find that if I train really hard and I, get, and I start mm -hmm. getting fatigued, it can affect me from a erectile dysfunction point of mm -hmm. view or just a sexual libido point yeah, of view. Absolutely, like, is that, yeah, Is that an indicator? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, one of the things um, that is a, is a big discussion is, is a decline in testosterone um, through age. And over the, you know, over the, the last however, you know, 10, 20 years, there's been a lot of studies on this and it's shown that there's a decline in testosterone with age. Um, but re more recent studies are showing that it's, it's less to do with age, but it's more of a generational decrease in testosterone. So this is, you know, meaning that our parents had higher testosterone than us and their parents had higher, te you, know, our, our, you know, our grandfathers had higher testosterone than our fathers. And so there's more of a generational decrease in, testo in testosterone as opposed to it being purely age related. There's obviously things that happen that, you know, as we age that are going to influence a reduction, things like in general we'll have a reduction in muscle mass, an increase in body fat. Those those are the two of the you know really important things when it comes to testosterone levels are you know our um, body fat levels, higher body fat levels will uh, reduce our testosterone as will you know um, having poor insulin sensitivity and, the, and these sorts of side effects of not exercising, being you know potentially being slightly overweight, those things will impact our testosterone. And then there's also the generational side, which is a lot to do with the stresses of the modern world, uh, the chemicals in the modern world, all these types of things, which actually do have a really, you know, quite profound impact on my testosterone. Okay, so what I heard there was like, if you aren't looking after your health and well-being and fitness, that can affect your testosterone. Yeah. What about if we take it to the other end sure. of the extreme? What happens there? Yeah, so obviously, especially, you know, in, th in things like endurance sports, um, or anywhere, any time you're doing long and hard sustained training, 
there is going to be, um, there can be impacts on your testosterone and re reduction in testosterone. And often this is caused by elevate, you know, prolonged elevated cortisol levels. So during, you know, during any type of exercise, cortisol, cortisol levels increase, but they will increase more during harder and more, you know, harder, longer, and more intense exercise. For example, going for a long, hard cycle ride or doing a, you know, a half marathon, these types of things. These will cause elevations in cortisol and cortisol and testosterone compete. So if our cortisol levels are elevated, then our, tos our testosterone levels um, will, will be decreased. And then I, I think we've had a conversation before about um, the sleep and the, the factor mm. and the way that this all kind of links in, especially with, with cortisol and your testosterone yeah. and, and the timing at which your body functions to produce these hormones. Yeah. How does that, or how does that work? And how yeah, that so, time? you know, quality sleep is, what, is one of the absolute fundamentals for high testosterone. Um, we can, we'll go through, you know, each, each, each point that I think is relevant to cover, but sleep is definitely one of the pillars there for it. And um, sleep, you know, is, is something that a lot of people suffer with. If your cortisol levels are high, sleep is going to be problematic. And if your sleep is bad, your cortisol, you know, cortisol levels are elevated as well. So it's kind of, there's a, there's a vicious cycle around sleep in that sense. So making sure that the quality of sleep is, is, is very good um, is, is one of the most important things for elevating testosterone levels. And then I guess that kind of, it probably speaks to a lot of people that have things like children yeah. and also kind of waking up early to try and get maybe training in before yeah. work or yeah. even yeah. Ar even after work. Yeah, absolutely. Is there anything that someone can do to help manage maybe, because cortisol is a stress hormone. Like yeah, a, yeah, stress hormone. hormone, absolutely, yeah. So cortisol is a stress hormone. It's released when we're put through physical or mental stress. Yeah. Is there anything that someone can do to try and l limit the effects that a that cortisol will have on affecting the quality of the sleep. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Cortisol. So, you know, um, it, from from the cortisol, you know, from the cortisol side of things, looking at any ways that we can reduce stress is something that's going to be really beneficial. So, you know, any kind of stress management tools that you, someone might have, if they, uh, you know, deep breathing technique uh, techniques like box breathing. Um, or you know meditation it's not something i do but meditate you know for people that suffer from stress is really good and there's also you know various supplements and things that people can take which have been shown to really help reduce cortisol levels as well okay so let's dive into that very quickly mm -hmm. what about supplements that might enable us to naturally produce because everything we are talking about yeah it's just natural body yeah body absolutely right yeah what is there anything that we can focus on kind of b vitamins mm -hmm. kind of Cod liver oil. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Help. So I think, you, you know, when, when you look at testosterone, you have to look at it in several ways. So you have to look at the things that might be, um, you know, blocking it or preventing it from being at the right level. Um, because even if you are taking things that are going to help to enhance it, if there's things that are getting in the, in the way of those levels being high, you're not going to reach the full potential there. So this is where making sure that you're set with, you know, the low cortisol levels. So things like ashwagandha root, for example, is a fantastic. Um, option for reducing cortisol levels, but then from from the actual perspective of you know of making sure your testosterone levels uh, are able to you know to, to to be high, there's obviously a lot you know lots of things within your diet and supplements that you can take. Some of the most important things are actually some of the key sort of vitamins and minerals that a lot of people are deficient in. So this is things like vitamin E, vitamin A, vitamin K2. Um, Vitamin D also is, is, a, is a big part of that. Um, you know, a lot of people don't spend enough time outdoors in the sunlight and this type of thing. So vitamin D is depleted in a you know, huge po um, part of the population. Um, and so those are some of the kind of essentials, uh, zinc and magnesium as well. Those, those minerals um, and, and vitamins are some of, the, some of the kind of foundations there for being able to produce testosterone. And from an indicator, <coughs> indicator point of view, um, for me, like I just remember being like a teenager, you wake up in the morning as a man, yeah, and, and you know you're kind of like an erection or yeah, something like yeah, that. Like, yeah, absolutely. Just the stuff that kind of you, I don't, you don't, obviously don't think about it at yeah. the time, but yeah. But are they things that we should still be expecting in our kind of late thirties, forties, kind of late forties, fifties? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I, I believe they are absolutely, and and you know it's 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 one of the kind of 
uh, measurements for you know testosterone level would be you know if you wake up in the morning erection for example that would be one of the one of the markers erection for and it. a massive smile yeah like, exactly like, yeah. no because like, that's what yeah. I do is yeah. like because like, yeah, to me it's like it is an indicator you, you, you feel more youthful absolutely I, yeah you and I'll wake up and be like and I'm yeah. and I'm like absolutely. and I noticed this a, a few months ago when I actually decided I was going to address this problem of just like maybe being a bit more a bit fatigued yeah and just kind of not libido was a little bit low yeah I was like, well, I'm going to address it. I just went straight on Google. I was like, how to increase yeah, testosterone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was, you know, it did come up with things like B vitamins and D vitamins yeah, and things yeah, like that. Yeah. So then I started things, you know, I take calcium, zinc, magnesium yeah, in the yeah, evening. Yeah. I take fish oils, B vitamins, D vitamins in, in, the, in the morning. Yeah. And it did make a massive yeah, difference it, it to the point where does, I, was, yeah. I was like waking up that's something with an erection yeah yeah and being like oh i'm happy with that absolutely yeah but then i guess that alleviates some of the stress as well so yeah kind of like yeah i mean you know it's it's a lot of the time with these things there you know it's that it's that you know it's that circle isn't it where if you're feeling stressed you feel more stress you know you feel more stress and then those results become even more exaggerated um but absolutely adding some you know just some of those basic vitamins and minerals that a lot of people are deficient in um, is really beneficial. And these are things you don't always have to supplement with as well. These are things we can get from a lot of the foods, things like that. Just recently I've started to increase things like how many egg yolks I'm having in a day, for example. Because egg yolks are absolutely packed with you know, things like uh, vitamin E, vitamin A, um, magnesium, zinc, uh, B vitamins, all of these things which we can get a lot from our food sources as how well. Many, how many are you having a day? So I have four, four eggs a day. Really? Yeah. Four eggs a day, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I like, a, I like having avocado toast and, yeah, yeah. and eggs. So like, yeah. my diet's quite simple. Yeah, yeah. So you're... And I'm, I'm 41 years old. Yeah. I'm pretty low body fat, mm -hmm. like reasonable shape. I don't have kids, so my sleep quality is actually probably a lot higher than a lot of, yeah. a lot yeah. of people. Yeah, yeah. But... Um, Changing my diet and changing my supplements was, was a big way for me to kind of like address my, Absolutely. my issue. The point I've got to at the moment is I've realized I've been doing quite a lot of high intensity, way more than like an 80-20 split. It's like, yeah. a, it's like a 60 40 split my mm -hmm. intensity is way too high and i've started realizing that i am getting fatigued again yeah <laughs> um, like i am starting to struggle with libido and absolutely yeah, yeah, yeah. erection yeah. issues and um are they the only indicators or like can we do tests or is, should we just be taking vitamins as a precaution like yeah no so, so doing tests is actually really is it can be a really useful thing because some people actually have you know, relatively high testosterone, but still suffer from a lot of the symptoms of somebody with low testosterone. And that's because one of the most important markers is actually free testosterone. So we have, um, basically we have a total level and then we have a, a free level, which is free to move. The rest actually binds. Um, and so it can't, be, it can't be utilized. And so that free marker is really important. And so some people actually have relatively high levels of total testosterone, but their free testosterone is low. Um, and so they'll still maybe have low libido, no, no morning wood, all of these types of things. And so, you know, that, they actually only need to address a couple of the markers there to increase their free testosterone because their total's fine. And so they can see a really positive change very quickly just by potentially reducing a couple of the other, you know, hormones, prolactin, for example, is one, and also um, sex hormone uh, binding globulin, another one, these two, which will, you know, reduce those, and then that's actually gonna allow for an increase in free testosterone. And again, we can do that with some supplementation with, with diet as well. Uh, supplements like boron, for example, fantastic for that. And so there's a, you can just add a few, a few little pieces. If you can see the big picture, um, add a few little uh, supplements here or changes to the diet there, and you can start to see some big changes. But obviously, with anyone that's doing hard training, that you know, the, the, there's the fundamentals of you know recovery and nutrition, which are going to outweigh any kind of micro tweaks you can do, when you, you know, with with supplements and things like that. Okay, so I suppose like the I always consider like the three pillars, like like volume, intensity, and recovery. Yeah. Like you you can't do all no, three at the no, same time. Absolutely. Like, you put yeah. them on a triangle. Like, yeah. Two, like yeah. Only one of them can. Yeah. Can, radiate out at yeah, any one time. Absolutely. So so is it possible to kind of train hard and try and keep your testosterone high or do you sometimes have to identify that when you're training a bit too much you might need to bring training down and just do they I mean I guess it's like a recovery week or a Yeah. Yeah, like absolutely. A, like yeah. A periodization yeah, of yeah. training. You know, factoring in, you know, periods of lower intensity, lower volume um, and coinciding that with 
you know, providing your body with lots of nutrients, um, lots of high quality sleep, um, those things is going to help to you know, obviously elevate the testosterone levels back up and reduce cortisol back, you know, and, and reduce that down as well. And so that's where you know, fact, yeah, absolutely factoring in rest days, recovery days, and, and actual periods of slightly lower volume and lower intensity are going to be very beneficial. And I think most people when they get excited about a new sport or you know, really enjoy it, you know, this has been myself included when I went back to cycling at 22 or 23 years old was you just want to do it all the time. You know, you want to do it every day. You don't want to take a day off. You just want to keep pushing and you want to, you know, every day you want to go a little bit harder, a little bit faster. And, you know, it's, it's a, obviously that's a, you know, a counterproductive way of actually trying to boost performance because, you, you know, your muscles aren't going to recover. Your hormones won't recover well from that either. You, you know, your sleep and these things are going to be affected. So you have to be smart with your training. And, and you know, I, I do think as well, it's important to look at the quality of the training over the quantity of the training, even for endurance sports. Yeah, because this is what I said to you that when I came in today was like I've noticed that my, I'm not getting my heart rate as high. Mm -hmm. It's not it's not peaking to where it was maybe four or five weeks ago because yeah. I've increased the volume but yeah. also tried to keep quite a lot of intensity in. Yeah, yeah. Um, so basically, I'm I'm going to rebuild. Yeah, yeah. Rebuild so my that's, bike you know, that's so it. I can't so ride it. It's, you know, there's you know that's obviously some some fatigue setting in, um, and you know a period of recovery there is going to help you sharpen up a little bit and, and be you know fresh to be able to get those heart rates up again and, and, and get that extra power down for sure. Nice. So I think that's like a really good place to to leave it for the testosterone conversation, which I personally consider hormones just like, and I'm sure you do right. Like hormones are just so important and one thing you've always said is like sleep like the foundation yeah absolutely like, yeah that you build your training yeah on yeah, like yeah. intervals and stuff and yeah. <laughs> you know yeah, yeah, like yeah whether you do 2040s is yeah the small bit right yeah the, yeah, the bit that you really want to worry about yeah. is like sleep hormones yeah absolutely yeah, and work, i think you know, yeah for healthy hormones you know to to kind of put you know put it into absolute, absolute basics would be making sure you're getting uh, enough sleep and also quality sleep as well um Reducing inflammation in the body is really important as well. So this would be, you know, making sure that you're not eating foods that are irritating your digestion and and and, and, and that kind of thing. Um, and then obviously, you know, nutrition in terms of getting all those important micronutrients in, macronutrients in, getting your proteins in, getting your saturated fats in, getting you know your vitamins and minerals in as well through through quality nutrition. And then there's obviously the training side of things as well. Right, man. Cheers. Appreciate it. Perfect. Thank you, mate. We'll see you guys on the next one.